All right, we have a very, very special guest here coming on the podcast for the next two episodes. And that is for two big reasons. Uh, First off, our guest today has 45 years of coaching experience. Um, But what's really powerful is this coach has evolved significantly over those 45 years. And I think the second big thing that makes this today's guest really unique is this coach has 45 years experience as an assistant coach, as an assistant coach. And I think that's incredibly rare. Today's guest is Bob Starkey. He's had a lot of success. He has been the LSU women's basketball uh, assistant coach during five Final Four appearances and only recently returned to LSU in April of 2022 to serve as the associate head coach on Coach Kim Mulkey's staff. And there, his impact was immediately felt as he helped the Tigers to their first national championship in 2023. Uh, Starkey has had a decorated career, having been a part of over 790 collegiate victories, 24 NCAA tournaments, eight trips to the Elite Eight, and five straight trips to the women's Final Four from 2004 to 2008. But what's most impressive to me, though, about Bob isn't his years of experience, it's his years of learning and growing. The thing is, there's loads of coaches out there who have been coaching 20, 30, 40 plus years who weren't learning and growing, right? They haven't evolved over that time. Bob is not that type of coach, he's not that type of leader, he's not that type of person. You're going to absolutely be blown away by Bob over the next two episodes. Today's episode, he's going to share some fantastic, very practical advice for assistant coaches. So if you're an assistant coach, you're probably going to want to listen to this one a few times. If you're a head coach, I am pretty sure you're going to want to share this with your assistants as it's really, really, really great stuff. Welcome to the Coaching Culture Podcast, the podcast to help you grow as a leader and build a better culture. My name is JP Nurbin, and I'm joined by my friends and co-hosts, Nate Sanderson and Betsy Butterick. In addition to this podcast, I'm a leadership coach and culture consultant. To learn more about how my business, TOC, can support you and your team, visit tocculture.com. To learn more about Betsy, go to betsybutterick.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the TOC newsletter every Thursday. We'll send you a short article as well as the notes to each episode of the podcast. When you subscribe to the newsletter, you also will get the top 10 podcast episodes and top 10 articles from TOC. You can subscribe using the link in the description of this episode or simply by going to tocculture.com and clicking on newsletter. Now, let's get into our conversation with Bob, Betsy, and Nate. So knowing that you started at Winfield High School in West Virginia, and then fast forwarding to today at LSU, my curious question to kick things off is, what hasn't changed from those two very different contexts? Well, you know, it's interesting. Uh, When I was a junior high basketball player, my junior high coach was a man named Alan Osborne. And he invested in me, not just as a basketball player, but as a kid. And it had a a profound impact on me. And so I went to Marshall University as a student and was majoring in journalism, but couldn't, I just got pulled back into the impact that, that Alan had had upon me as a junior high coach. So that, that, that's what led me into this profession. And I just remember the back of my mind thinking if, if I could impact young people, uh, and help steer them in a certain direction and maybe make their lives better, that would be, that would be, uh, you know, a really noble way uh, to make a living. And uh, so I, that has never changed for me, uh, you know, regardless of what level I'm on, you know, the the number one responsibility I have is, is my ability to impact people beyond the court. Basketball's it's, it's simply just a game or a tool that we use uh, to try and create better human beings uh, with the, the things that we teach. You know, ironically, when I got married at the age of 31, my junior high coach, Alan Osborne, stood beside me. Uh, I talked to him this weekend. Uh, of course, he's now he, he's, he's one of the most winningest high school coaches in the state of West Virginia. Uh, but he had that type of impact on me. And uh, that's 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 never left me. 
when it comes to being an assistant coach, I think sometimes it, there's a feeling that my impact can be limited because my role is limited. When you approach it from this transformational perspective, what are ways that you've found to, to have the most impact on the people through the game as an assistant coach? Well, I think the most important thing assistant coach has to do is to be intentional uh, in developing relationships. Uh, the, the better I know a young lady or a young man, the better I'm going to be able to teach in basketball. Uh, so I'm intentional in my approach, whether, you know, we'll, we'll, you know, for instance, this, this past Saturday morning, uh, Flage Johnson, our sophomore, wanted to come in and watch film on an off day. So we were in here for about an hour. And about 45 minutes was was basketball, and the other 15 minutes was life. Uh, so, you know, it's nothing for me to to shoot a text to a player, say, hey, you got, you got time this afternoon, why don't we, we go to lunch, or let's go grab a cup of coffee, or, you know, we'll, we'll have a group of kids out to the house, and my wife will serve them dinner. Uh, but you, you, you have to be intentional in learning about young people. Uh, it's, 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 it's totally different from the days when I first started out coaching, when the coach would say, do this. Uh, and you would never entertain a player saying why now it means a lot when a player says why, uh, and, and speaking of that word, I think that's one of the most important words in developing relationships with kids is trying to figure out their why. Not everybody plays basketball purely for the love of the game. Uh, and certainly their end game or their end goals aren't the same. So when I can have a relationship with a young person and figure out why they're playing and where they want the game to take them, uh, then I have opportunity not only to teach them at a higher level, but maybe impact uh, their growth as a young person. So in some, in some ways, I think being an assistant coach, we we, we have uh, uh, more opportunities or better opportunities to develop relationships than the head coach. And to, to build off of that, Bob, and I love how you use that word intention, like the more intentionally I can get to know an individual, the better able I am to then coach them. As you're getting to know individuals, do you have some favorite questions, not about basketball, but about life that, that help you get to know them in that very intentional way? There are a few. One, one of the ones that I always like to ask is, is, is why did you start playing basketball to begin with? And I think that's a very telling question. Um, I, I'll, I'll give an example without mentioning somebody's name. This was on the men's side. You know, I was at, at LSU on the men's side for, for 13 years. And uh, we had uh, two former players that came back uh, for a reunion. And uh, I, I was out with them uh, having dinner. And one of the players was talking about how uh, they missed the practice, they missed the grind, that they, they, they missed all the things that, that went into preparing. And the other player, uh, who was a, a post player, uh, obviously a, a big tall kid, said, well, he goes, I, I guess you would. So, you know, but see, you, you played basketball because you loved it. I played basketball because I had to. So basketball for him was a tool to get an education, try and better his life. So finding out why you got into basketball to begin with, I think is really important. The second thing I like to know uh, from young people is who their influences are, whether it's uh, a, a parent, a coach, uh, it, whoever it is in their life that influences them. How, how did they do that? You know, how, how, why is this person so important to you? How were they able to motivate you and push your buttons? Cause there might be a clue of, of something uh, that I could utilize. When you start to discover all these different whys, I remember we had uh, Jason Caldwell on the podcast who owns the world record for crossing the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean in a rowboat, if you can imagine doing something like that with three of your friends. Um, but he mentioned that the guys on the boat, when they'd run into challenge, that they were all motivated by totally different reasons, you know, right. to be chasing that record. And yet he had a responsibility then to take those whys and find a way to get them focused on a singular purpose. How do you navigate that as you start to discover, and we've done this with our teams, we start to realize that kids are out for basketball for all kinds of different reasons. It becomes a bit of a challenge trying to figure out how to get them all focused on, you know, sometimes on pulling in the same direction. Well, I, I think you kind of gave the answer within your question. I, I think understanding as a leader uh, that everybody is motivated differently. Uh, and and knowing that there's not, you know, you 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 just you just can't hammer it across the same way with with, with 15 kids. You know, we will have anywhere from 12 to 15 players on our team, and 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 you can't have one singular form of motivation or or one particular method of communication. Uh, there there there's some kids who are going to respond well to 
uh, intensity from a coach. There, there's others that are going to respond better when the coach whispers in their ear. Uh, and then you have to understand where basketball is going to take them, where they want basketball to take them. So, you know, we obviously have some players that are driven to play professionally. Uh, and certainly that's, 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 that's a different kind of conversation that you have with them when you're talking about uh, how they are to work and, and commit and decade. And then you have others that are using basketball uh, to get through school or, or, or some other various reasons. So that's why the relationship part is so important. Understanding uh, the heartstring of each kid and, 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 and which one you need to play. Certainly there's going to be times where, you know, the coach has to talk or you, you show a video, but, the best motivation I think is done one-on-one -on -one, uh, where you're having a conversation with somebody and you're reminding them why they're playing and how playing at, at such an elite level, whether it's their preparation, their work ethic can get them closer to their goals, whether that's to be a pro player or, or to be a lawyer or, 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 or to be a, a parent that runs a successful family. And Bobby, you bring up such a great point about how as a leader, it's, it's crucially important that we understand the different motivations for each of the athletes. Talk a little, if you will, about, it's one thing for you as a coach to understand, how do you help some of your players, let's say your more competitive players, replace judgment that their teammate isn't motivated by, let's say the desire to win, that they're here for different reasons. How do you coach that individual to best work with teammates who are motivated in different ways or by different things? Well, I think, first of all, the, the most important component of this communication. Uh, and and I, I think working here at, at LSU, uh, that's a big, big thing with Coach Malky. Uh, Coach Malky communicates with individuals, and she also communicates with the team. I think sometimes just letting those highly competitive people understand that not all players are wired like them begins with explaining to them what's important to their teammates. And at the same time, making sure that why – you may be highly competitive and living in the gym and this player's not, you still need this player to achieve your goals. So understanding that, that their desires and, 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 and their level of motivation or their end game is different. Uh, it's just as important for them to know. And it's not a, it's not an area to be questioned. And, and it, it is a delicate, it's a delicate situation. And that's where I think culture comes into play. You know, if, 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 if you have a culture that embraces diversity uh, and, and that, that is a, a diversified thing, uh, you know, people are motivated by different things and have different goals. And if people understand and respect that, uh, then I think they have a better opportunity to work together. When it comes to that communication throughout the program, I it seems that assistant coaches can play different roles on that. I remember having an assistant that played for me. We took over a new program and she introduced herself as the Sanderson interpreter. <laughs> In other words, like she would be the one to make sure, you know, to follow up and make sure that everybody understood what I was trying to share, even if I did it, do it in the right way. How would you describe kind of what your role is in helping to facilitate communication sort of up and down throughout the program between players and head coach and vice versa? I think a big part of that is understanding first what it is the head coach wants communicated. Uh, that's the most important. There has to be a, a singular message. Uh, it can't be the head coach saying one thing and feeling one thing and an assistant coach saying something else and feeling something else. Uh, being an assistant coach, this is, this is not um, an avenue for me to express my opinion. Uh, I, I, I can display or communicate Coach Malky's opinion uh, in a different way, uh, but it, it, it still has to be, you know, she's the head coach. And I think sometimes assistant coaches can uh, cause irreputable damage uh, by what they communicate to players by saying, Hey, you know, you know how coach he is, you know, I, you know, if I was the head coach, I would have done it differently, but you know, those, those are the things that I think can uh, start rotting at the roots of good culture. So that's, that, that's the first thing. Uh, there is sometimes, uh, I believe I can deliver coach Malky's message a little better because of the relationship I have with a particular kid. Uh, and I know sometimes she will, she will contact me say, Hey, I'm not sure. Uh, you know, Sarah understands what I was trying to say, would you bring her in and make sure that we're on the same page? And there may be sometimes where I get the feel 
that Sarah didn't understand what Kim was trying to say. And so I'll try and have a conversation with her. So the first thing and the most important thing is to always be loyal uh, to the message of your head coach. And then really and truly, you know, there's two things here. The first thing is trust. There's not a more stronger word uh, in coaching or culture than trust. Uh, it's a very hard thing to build, and it's very, very easy to destroy. And the most important thing is trust is just, number one, constantly be honest. And number two, don't ever promise something concrete. I never, I, I will always tell a kid, you know, you know, if a kid says, if, if I come here and I work hard, can you promise me I'll go to the WNBA? And I said, no, I said, but I'll tell you what, I will promise you I'll do everything in my power to get you there. Uh, I, I never want to break my word to my kid. Uh, the th second thing and, and that's really important kind of goes back to communication is, is, is messaging. Uh, each kid receives the message different depending on how you give it. You know, there's a, a really great story I heard from Tim Elmore many years ago. Uh, and he just, he talked about water. You know, he said in the beginning of time, there was a water and man would cup their hands and bring water to their mouth and, and, and drink it. Uh, and then they figured out they could hollow out a, a, a piece of wood and scoop it up. And then, then they, they developed a, a, a cup and, uh, you know, and, and then they, they had the whale, they could drop a bucket and pull it up. And, and then there was plumbing. And, and now, now we get water in a bottle. And Elmore's point was in a million years, water and its importance has never changed. What has is the packaging. So when we're talking about uh, discipline, commitment, work, all those things have never changed from the beginning of, of, of coaching and teaching, but how we package it has. And to uh, a greater extent, selling that package different to each player. It's like, you know, you go to the grocery store now and you just, you don't, you just don't buy water. There's smart water, there's flavor, you know, and you, you, your, your, your teaching and your motivation has to be like that. You know, it goes back full circle to relationships. How's this person going to receive this message? How, and so that now I've got to package that so that they'll best receive it. And, and I just think that's a really important, really important piece. I want to come back to Tim Elmore in a little bit, because we've had him on the podcast here, not that long ago and have, have read his books. And I think that conversation about Gen Z and millennials and just the generational differences is fascinating. But I want to follow up on one thing that you mentioned there, which was in your communication with the players, that's not the place for your opinion. But where is the place for your opinion as an assistant coach? Because I think you're right. That can be messed up pretty easily if it's not channeled in the right direction. So what guidance would you give to assistants in terms of how do we express ourselves, whether it's to the head coach or bringing new ideas or even giving them feedback sometimes it's not easy for them to hear. Well, I think when you're having communication with your head coach, again, the first thing goes to trust. So uh, I think you have to build a trust with your head coach that when you come with a suggestion or a thought, she knows you're coming from a place of, 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 of you're trying to help improve the team. You're not trying to build your resume. And sometimes that takes time. And certainly uh, the one thing I've learned 45 years being an assistant coach is every head coach is different. So there's a right time and a right place to present thoughts and ideas and opinions. Uh, the best coaches I have worked for, the absolute best, want my opinion, want my opinion. I, Kim wants my opinion. Uh, the other thing that's important for an assistant coach to know is once you give that opinion and the head coach says, I appreciate it, I think I'm going to go another direction, that's it. It's done. You don't pout. You don't question it. It's, it's a suggestion, it's opinion. That's why she or he sits in that chair. Uh, the other thing before I give Kim an opinion or suggestion, uh, it's well thought. I, I just don't go to her arbitrarily with, uh, hey, why don't we put this play in? You know, I, you know I'm going to go, hey, listen, I'm watching some film. Uh, you know, we're getting ready to play so-and-so. Uh, they really struggle with this type of action. I think with our particular players, uh, if we put them in this position, I think this little set here could help us. And uh, I just, I'm, I, the head coach today has so many things on their plate. I mean, it's especially on our level. I mean, it's not even a plate. It's a plate, a bowl, a side dish. I mean, it's crazy. 
Uh, the last thing she needs for me is just throwing darts at her about this, 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 and this. So uh, I, I think it's just you have to be smart and careful when you decide what you want to bring to the head coach. And, and, and again, I, I think once you build trust and rapport with your head coach, uh, I think the, the reception is a little bit different, a little bit better. And you've brought so many things in the last five minutes to this conversation, and there's a lot to unpack. You know, you mentioned that plate, and it is. It's more like a buffet line, and you're lucky if you get a plate and if it's clean, right? Um, continuing on that water metaphor, you mentioned trust and trust being essential to quality communication. I remember years ago, just on the radio, some talk show was on, and they said, you know, trust is something that's gained in droplets and lost in buckets. Mm -hmm. And when you think about trust, when you think about communication, you had reposted something recently, a, a quote by Red Arbeck that said, it's not what you tell your players that counts, it's what they hear. And I think of John Wooden, you haven't taught until they've understood or until they've Absolutely. learned. How do you know that? Like for you as an assistant, when you are teaching, when you're communicating, how do you know that they've learned? How do you know that you've been understood as intended? Well, let's start with, with and, 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 and shame on me, the most important part of communication is listening. It's listening. So uh, if I'm watching film with a player, work practice, uh, and something's going on, I'm going to ask her, why did you do that? You know, I, 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 it, questions are, are, are a very big part of communicating and understanding. Uh, so getting feedback from that individual is the way I know she heard not just what I said, but how I needed her to hear it. Uh, because there's a lot of things that are lost in translation. I think it's, it's, it, it's funny you brought that post up. I, I think it's one of the, 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 the biggest uh, mistakes coaches make is they just assume because they said something, uh, the player received it the way they needed to. And, and young coaches specifically, uh, the first thing they go to is, well, they weren't paying attention. Well, they may have been paying great attention, but maybe you didn't present it in such a way that they received it the way you needed it to. Everybody receives information differently too, by the way. Now, that's a part of coaching is understand uh, how people best receive it, whether it's verbal, whether it's audio, whether it's uh, uh, visual or a combination of the two. But I think asking questions are very, very important. And when you're, you're, you're talking about trust, trust comes number one uh, from being honest, from not breaking promises. And I think really important in our profession in this day and age, more so than it's ever been, is kids want to know that you care about them more than just beyond a couple of made baskets and some rebounds. And you have to be genuine. You can't fake that. With, with kids today, uh, you, you cannot fool these young people. And, and it, you, you, sometimes you have a little bit of a, an uphill road because uh, maybe coaches in the past uh, have broke that trust or, or broke promises or didn't follow through or maybe cared about them just as basketball players. So you may be digging yourself as a hole out of a hole when that kid comes to campus. So uh, just, you know, it's one of my favorite quotes about culture. Uh, comes from Doc Rivers, and he says, you have to fight for it every day. And it's the same thing with the trust of your players. If you have uh, players that you care about and trust you, you, you have to be intentional every day to make sure you don't break that. Well, that's great. And that obviously, you know, is is the lifeblood of culture, right? Because it's hard to build a good culture. It's hard to protect values. It's hard to have standards. If there isn't the bonds of trust that hold it all together, um, and obviously we're facing that those challenges at every level, right? Not just at the collegiate level. I'm curious, we've, we've talked a little bit about the work of Tim Elmore here and Mike Neighbors has talked about this at a lot of clinics and I've gotten to listen to Mike and how he's kind of um, applied some of Tim's principles. Are there any other takeaways from his work just on the generational differences and trying to be able to coach a quote unquote today's player that has really served you well? Uh, tons. By the way, Mike Neighbors is the one who turned me on to Tim Elmore. And uh, uh, there's not a, a book written by Tim, podcast, uh, the, his, his email. Uh, the, you know, if, if, if you're interested in coaching today's generation, how can you not be a student of Tim Elmore? That, that, that would be what I would say. Uh, but Tim talks about the importance of understanding how this generation is wired. I mean, it, it, and I think as coaches, we know, matter of fact, let me give you this. Both 
Buzz Williams, who's who's the head men's coach at Texas A&M, somebody I respect, made this comment. Don't be that coach that criticizes this generation of player because every generation of player has been criticized by some coaches. It's just uh, every generation changes. So if if you're complaining, then you're not finding solutions. And and that that's where Tim has been very helpful. Some things that we learned from Tom, uh, Tim is, is that kids receive things better in, in shorter bunch segments. Uh, I'll give you an example. Back in the week, we played Virginia Tech on Thursday. We've given our that kids a couple of days off to study for finals. We're having our first practice back today. Back in the day, we would we would pop the tape in. I said tape. That shows you how far back you pop the tape in, and you would sit there for about two and a half hours, and you watch the whole game with the kids. Uh, you can't do that anymore. They're 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 not wired to maintain attention that long. So we have came so far advanced to where. We cut up short segments of clips. Uh, we categorize them, and then we show them in snippets. So today we're going to look at defensive clips from Virginia Tech, and the first 10 clips will be transition defense all together. So we can talk about that one topic all together. And then we're going to have uh, one called perimeter defense, where we thought we gave up too many baseline drives. Uh, and then there'll be a, there'll be a positive clip of, of half court so like that and and we'll just show that and then tomorrow we'll come back and we'll do the the offensive segment we do the same thing with our scouting you know it used to be you popped in the scouting tape and you'd watch all of it now we'll watch it three different days where we're watching it in short segments you know I'm, we I, 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 when i was at a and m we might watch tape two or three times a day in practice we'd watch five minutes go practice and then we take a break break and watch a few more Scouting reports used to be 10, 15 pages. Now ours are three pages, and they're in bullet points. Now, some people will say, well, you're not getting them all the Well, we are getting the information. They're getting the information off the videotape. We're having them with a, a shorter report to read, but then when we're watching video, we're having them take notes. And I'm, I'm a big believer this, this helps them retain information better. Uh, so, Tim, just – in terms of scouting and video and us getting information, just, just in that alone uh, has impacted our programs greatly. All right, let's take a pause in our interview with Bob Starkey. First, a few things that I really want to highlight from today's interview. The first thing is that we can impact lives as an assistant coach. And I think I've seen way too many coaches who feel like they can't make the impact that they want to have as a leader because they aren't the head coach or because the head coach is a transactional leader or the head coach is an ineffective leader. And that's absolutely baloney. I don't care if you work for a great head coach or a bad head coach. You can have an impact by just showing up with the right energy, the right mindset, the right attitude, and building relationships. And Bob really talks a lot about that, how we have to get intentional in our relationships. If you're having a conversation with an athlete, 45 minutes might be around the sport. 15 minutes are gonna, is going to be around life. We got to get to know our players why, right? Uh, that is so, so important. It's a great reminder for us as coaches, head coaches and assistant coaches, that our players' whys are going to be different. It's about how we can help take those whys and mold them into a unified kind of mission as a team. It's also a great reminder for head coaches and assistants how everyone, we need to be having these one-on-ones consistently throughout the year with our athletes, not just the beginning of the year, not just the end of the year, but on a consistent basis, every couple of weeks, at a minimum every month, one coach needs to be sitting down with our players and having those one-on-ones. Um, lastly, assistant coaches need to know what the head coach wants communicated. You got to be on the same page. I've seen this a lot in the programs that I work with. There is sometimes different messages being sent from the head coach, the assistant coach, and that absolutely can be so destructive to the culture, to the level of trust that you're trying to create. And we've got to stay loyal as assistant coaches. And that, you know, there's something to be said for that ability to be able to disagree and then commit fully. Um, you're going to love part two of our conversation with Bob. So be sure to come back for next episode to make sure you don't miss it you should hopefully have already subscribed to the Coaching Culture Podcast. While you're doing that, if you don't mind just taking 15 to 30 seconds to leave us a review, hopefully a five-star review 
and a few comments there was always appreciated as well as head on over to tocculture.com and subscribe to the newsletter to get the notes to this and every episode of the podcast. Thanks for listening in.